Perfect. Okay, guys, welcome back to the Happy Happy Podcast. I'm Dara Gibbs, I'm the Ginger Man, and I'm interviewing today Kate Whitfield, who is Olympic athlete for Ireland, of course, in terms of race walking. She's also part of the Ginger family, so a fellow fighting warrior like myself. (laughs) And um, Kate has an amazing background in terms of sport, mindset, going from highs to lows, you know, in terms of her sporting background, national under 18, race walking champion, and Euro juniors cross country champion as well. And there's loads more as well, which we'll discuss completely. Um, But with the podcast, guys and ladies, whoever is listening, let us know what you think via message, um, a DM, or on Facebook, or wherever you're watching this or listening to this, and let us know what valuable points you're taking from the podcast. Okay, thanks so much for coming on. This is episode two. Thanks you're having me. Guest. You're probably the, the first and only, or will ever be the only ginger guest I have on, besides myself. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, Gabe, we'll crack into it anyway. So, like, in particular, when I was chatting to you and looking at that article, that I was studying before so that I did the interview with you. Yeah. Like basically when you're in school, from what I gather was, you're a bit of a beast in terms of being an athlete with everything mm-hmm. that you're doing, you know, like training camps in Spain, constantly being breaking your own PBs week you know, every time you're doing a new competition, for example. And like for me, that seems like an absolutely cr- incredible bubble to be in. So like what kind like explain the bubble that you were in at that moment in time when you were in school. That's brilliant. It's exactly what it was. It was a bubble. And it was, um, I would have called myself, I suppose, a freak in a way. Yeah. Um, in, in a freak in a way that everything I did, um, it was all centered around athletics. And I suppose a high performance mindset in everything I did. And that kind of chase perfection all the time. And I kind of did keep myself nearly out from the, away from the real world a little bit, you know. Mm. Um, literally did keep myself in, in that bubble and kind of this was the way it's going to be and had this mindset and had this thought, you know, that I'm different. I want to be different. I want to do this. And um, yeah, so it, it's hindsight's a great thing. And it's interesting looking back on the way I was. I was very, say, I know what you call a mature for my age, but I suppose different. Yeah. Because my lifestyle for my age, like I remember doing transition year and for a lot of the year I was away on camp and I was just, it was all about athletics and I was with yeah. adults a lot and I was, um, I suppose, would you say not doing the, well, whatever normal or whatever the usual yeah, yeah, so yeah. It's for my age. Um, and then, yeah, and it was kind of maybe nearly people might say I had sense beyond my years kind of a thing. Mm. but it's funny I would have thought that would have kept going forever and I was kind of like this is where yeah, I yeah, am yeah. now so I'm progressing 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 always chasing perfection excellence everything I did was measured and um yeah it was all everything was for a goal and it was mm. very intense and um I suppose I thought that's the way it was going to be like when I won then world youths at 17 I thought I was looking at other people who had race, um, raced at that age and their yeah. times and what they were doing now like they were winning olympics and stuff and I was like that's going to be you know me I'm going to go mm. here to here to here to here linear and it's going to all be you know <laughs> and eventually the crack started to appear so it was like my bubble burst you know yeah and you're brought into the real world I suppose we might call it or whatever yeah mm. so yeah it was um Obviously, Heinz was great, but it was definitely too intense and too, maybe, um, yeah, uh, too, I don't know, just, I suppose just not real, not, not yeah, yeah, um, yeah. sustainable, not sustainable. Yeah. Yeah. And how, like, how did that perfectionist, you know, freak, as you said there, come about from childhood, like, where you, like yeah. I, know, I, know, I know your, da- your dad in particular is ma- massive into mm-hmm. running and doing marriage and stuff like that. Is that where you kind of got it from or like? Yeah, it's interesting. Interest? I think people think, you know, that people are on about pushy parents and this like, but I think mm. I had something in me myself, even from a young yeah, age, yeah, when yeah. I did start athletics at eight, um, that about, you know, about training. And I did just get, um, I suppose, even, even from a young age, I was competitive. I think it was, you know, yeah, yeah. And, 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 and yeah, just uh, wanting to be the best at everything I did kind of. Now, I must say, I suppose then running or athletics was normal in, in my family when I would see my dad every day going out running, mm. you know, so that obviously does have an influence. Yeah, it's yeah, funny yeah, how yeah. environment, and I see now environment is key 
you know, it's what you're around, it's what you see, it's the people you hang out with. Mm. And uh, particularly for, for children, like I did sports as, a, as my undergrad and I went back and did primary teaching. So I see with kids how, yeah, it's, God, it's what they see, you know? Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. So for me, maybe when things are normalized, it was normal, mm. you know, training was kind of, it was just became, became part of my life. And everything every day was all geared around okay when was training and everything else then would fall into that kind of you yeah, know yeah 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 uh, yeah but I think it was just something in me um I don't know what you'd uh I definitely had just a little a lot of drive from a young age kind of mm. um and probably some people couldn't understand that they were like wow this is, yeah for a yeah, young yeah, age yeah. to have that kind of um I think you know, then there's the whole debate of nature versus nurture you know it's a hard one to um I suppose talk about I suppose it depends it's so different for everyone but yeah. it's definitely something that I just had and mm. have that that ended up having me to be the best at what I do so it was it was it was brilliant but it also uh with can go the other way yeah and yeah of course kind of can destroy you you know in what way you look at it or, or depending on what happens so it's, it's kind of yeah, good and bad yeah and what was it like being in school like around with other kids or the teachers like like the way like the way you're sounding like you sound like somebody that is in a high level career for example or somebody that kind of business or you know a high level like you are a high level level athlete but obviously say for a 14 15 16 year old 16 year old yeah. student they'd be like what the fuck is this person doing now obviously for them that's just their way of thinking like but like where the kids or teenagers or teachers like treat you differently like in a Oh, she's amazing or what way did I go? Yeah, I felt that and I, I suppose that's what I that was that became my identity then and then I kinda had mm. to live up to those expectations because it was um I felt maybe the standout I got it, you know, they it was um I could do no wrong kind of a thing. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. And even people talking to my family or the stuff they'd say, like and even with teachers and with everyone in the school and uh with just a lot of adults and just people in general, people involved in athletics, people it was all kind of praise and it was all this, you know, um and they'd nearly leave you off with, with stuff because they'd know I would do the work anyway, if you get me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you what know? you mean. Um and yeah, it was kind of like they nearly put you on a pedestal. And maybe it's from being from a small town as well or whatever. And yeah, they put on this pedestal and then you have to deliver on that kind of a thing. Mm. and then that's when it becomes I suppose destructive and it's not you know always the, the people it was me then putting the pressure on myself because I had to live yeah, up to yeah, this yeah. and I wanted to be this and I wanted to um people would have talked about me when I was young so I had to deliver then and, and kind of follow through with that into an adult when I couldn't do that then that mm. became that became the problem yeah then. yeah I get you but yeah so it was um yeah I'm sure a lot of the teachers were like oh my yeah like uh because <laughs> they were like how do you you hope you keep it all together because I was you know my schoolwork everything was everything I did I would have done um yeah to a to a high level I suppose mm. but the other thing is then I wouldn't do I, I it's either I do all it's kind of all or nothing yeah and, and that was the same problem as well because if I was going to you know fail or whatever I wouldn't do it mm, I get you, know, you it was kind of like I have to be the best or I don't do it kind of a thing yeah 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 yeah, yeah. and what like for myself personally I mean, like, because i obviously have my own business and stuff for over a year and obviously you can put, you, you can put a lot of pressure on yourself now mm -hmm. i don't as much as i used to but i'd imagine obviously when you're a teenager and you know your brain's not fully developed and you can think yourself into a bad place for example what kind of like every, people listen know exactly putting too much pressure or self-talk putting yourself down in a particular way yeah. what kind of pressure were you putting on yourself and how was it like how was it affecting your day-to-day -day life how was it like was it helping you in a positive way or was it putting you down in a negative way yes yeah, so the funny thing is that at 15 16 17 i thought i knew it all you know yeah, yeah. my <laughs> I head was all different do. um i would have looked up kind of like everything i did i it was for a reason a purpose every training session everything i ate, ate all my lifestyle and i would have looked up stuff um you know, looking up research and all this, mm. you know, so I was like, okay, I, I know all this stuff and I'm being proactive and taking control of everything, you know, yeah. I'm in control of this, control of that. And yeah, thinking th um, th that I had it all under control and that I knew what I was doing, but looking back, you know, I didn't, but I just had this view on the world, you know, mm. it's like I had my blinkers on and this is the way things are, 
and this is the way they will be and I will keep controlling them to be this way and nothing will stop me kind of a thing yeah 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 um so yeah I'll go back to your the actual question again what way, what way <laughs> I go on a tangent. Oh, what way, right. oh, what, well, what way were you putting the pressure on you? Like, how oh, was yeah, it affecting so your day to day life? And at the time, I was able to cope with the pressure. It was kind of like nothing mm. could, because because I think from from I would go into a race at seventeen, knowing that I did more than anyone else on the start yeah, line. Yeah, 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 yeah. With regards to lifestyle and everything else, I was like, no one will outwork me, kind of a thing. That's the attitude mm. I had, and that's where I got my confidence from. The confidence came from the actions because I left no stone unturned, and everything was um, kind of measured, and everything was calculated, and everything was, I suppose, analyzed to achieve yeah. with me. So then that gave me the confidence. So I was kind of like, nothing could stop me, kind of a thing. Mm. Um, and the pressure. Yeah, like I suppose I was able to deal with the pressure then because things yeah. were going well. It was always, you know, progressing and that would lead you on to a new height and then a new, you know. And I, yeah, I think I was, I was, I was okay with it. Um, I liked, I love racing. So I kind of yeah. liked them, that, that kind of pressure and I, I always performed well um, under that. But I think that was my preparation, the preparation I put into it. Yeah, of course. And then, though in saying that, then when the cracks began to appear then the pressure did become too much and that's when I really felt yeah all the pressure yeah. and you you again you kind of tell you you can make up any story you want in your own head you know yeah and yeah, you yeah. Can justify things and you can um yeah you kind of have a judgmental view on the world I suppose and it's you know and then then you start overthinking everything over analyzing everything that's when your mind just starts going you drive yourself kind of mad I suppose yeah definitely yeah All right the, the fact you said that um I know then, like, soon after that, that you got a hip injury. Yeah. And in terms of, like, from just even speaking to there, it was just win, 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 win. Like, yeah. high levels of success. And then, obviously, when you got the hip injury, didn't, uh, didn't you know, live up to your own expectations. How did that fail? How did you deal with that failure? Because I think people do not understand what failure is. On, like, and when they do get it, then it's just, boom worlds yeah. that's exactly it and that's i suppose how i look at things so differently now mm. um back then so in 2011 i don't think i was beaten it was like one world one this one that in ireland yeah for maybe the three years previous it was i was going out to try and beat my own records my own national junior records i got a national senior record uh schools records you know like and I, it, it's mad because i never would have worried about the competition the the actual people in the competition I know it mm. sounds really cocky now, but it was always just me racing against me because mm. um, there wasn't the competition there. And yeah. it was just how fast I can go. Obviously, internationally, there was the competition. But yeah, I remember yeah, yeah. at Worlds, when I, when I was in the best shape of my life at World Youth, I took the race. At, I, I, my coach had told me there was a group of us maybe broke away. There was maybe five, six of us. And my coach told me not to go until like 3K it was a 5k race and yeah. like I just remember the feeling in that race of controlling the race I knew yeah. when I go no one was going to come with me so there was mm. a Chinese uh second a Russian third or a Russian second Chinese third and a Mexican fourth so the four of us broke away so then it was kind of nearly a, a game I was like I'm just waiting to leave you like I'm yeah, just yeah, playing, yeah, you know, yeah. like I'm just sussing this out not going out in front not taking the lead yet but when I went in that race, boom, it was gone. I was gone. And I controlled mm. that race. And um, yeah, it was mad because it was Worlds. And I kind of won it so convincingly. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And then the following year, how so much can change in a year, that's when the cracks, yeah, began. So mm. um, it went from that. And yeah, the whole winning, winning, winning. The year later, um, I was finished 17th in the Worlds. Yeah. And I went into looking at an article two days before the race, being like that I was the favorite. So I felt even in the race, everyone was looking at me, waiting for me to kind of control the race, to go. Yeah, to, yeah. To, and the cracks were there all along with the injury and with different things, but I would just um, block them out, block them out, block them out, pretend that everyone was okay. Mm. And I was kind of even fooling myself. But there's no hiding then when you get in the start line, do you know? Yeah, of course. Um, there is no hiding and, and your 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 cracks and everything, they'll they'll be there. You can't just keep blocking them out. Mm. So I stepped off the track. It was just, just uh, mad from going from one. It was literally going from one extreme the year before to the other. 
yeah and yeah, then yeah. that's when everything went mad so i was like oh my god everyone's talking around me and people were wondering oh, what it was such a difference in a year you know with mm. everything and um yeah that's when then everything so i would have seen that as a big failure obviously now looking back it's like oh it's a learning it was learning yeah, but yeah, back yeah. then yeah it was like i let everybody down um and just hated the sport because i couldn't win if i can't win um and going from i suppose it was it was living in the past then as well it was comparing what i was to what i am now mm. and yeah it just became i suppose destructive yeah, and yeah, yeah. The thing then i with the hip injury it was kind of like i lost control of everything because that happened something outside my control yeah and that just freaked me out instead of kind of it was like self-sabotage you know you you your one of your tires is slashed so you just go and you slash the other three instead yeah, of taking yeah, yeah. Control of what you can realizing everyone has obstacles everyone has struggles you know there's always going to be weeds in the garden it's inevitable but back then i couldn't accept i suppose i couldn't accept it you know and um yeah it was like my little path of the way i wanted things to go wasn't going the way i wanted it to and it was like yeah. a child or something then i was just kind of like um um i suppose yeah, like um, like a tantrum or something, you know, mm. because when I wasn't getting my way or something, that was kind of yeah. Yeah, yeah. And in terms of the hip injury, what actually what actually happened to the hip itself? Yeah, so it was an overuse kind of injury, and funny enough, I still it's the same hip. So I'm how many yeah. years later? That was 2011, and I'm still struggling with that hip. It's mm. caused me, yeah. But um, it was kind of look it was probably overuse of doing and that's the funny thing as well with my coach back then was trying to really mind me because a lot of people were giving me advice and trying to give me advice and being like you need to be there for the long run for a senior career yeah. you know and um i was always the one with my coach doing too much pushing it all the time doing extra training you know mm. that kind of um and just pushing everything to extremes all the time it was kind of that no pain no gain thing which is yeah, always yeah, right yeah, to yeah. Just, so it was kind of when my body was growing um, and just the motion of race walking, it was just an overuse injury. And mm. it's something now that I am still, that I still kind of have to manage because it's all, it's there and it has come back in different, um, you know, different things like a problem with the ligament, problem with the, um, you know, tendon, problem with the, mo like, oh yeah. So, yeah. Um, but then it's just kind of, yeah, again, accepting that, acceptance isn't was massive is was a massive thing for me because i always found mm. it really hard to the whole why me you could kind of play the victim and whatever yeah 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 on with it and that every athlete has to deal with these kind of you know issues i suppose yeah of course yeah and um, yeah so it was basically you kind know, of too much too young as i was growing basically yeah and okay. that eventually your body you know you can push and it's funny because you know it is mind over matter with things and i think with your mind i can and i still and i still do it on it's like talk about insanity doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different yeah, result yeah, yeah. i still do it in training where i'm i'm you know, there's, a, there's a fine line between pushing it and going over that line of, of where it's a pain where it's pain and yeah, where it's yeah, damaged yeah. and there's so many times i've crossed that line and mm. i've made things so much worse instead of being like you know because for me if there's a program there's a program and i have to follow it yeah. And then if I don't follow the program, that even can freak me out because I'm like, mm. oh, it has to follow, you know. And if I yeah, miss yeah, out yeah. stuff, I'm trying to catch up on what I missed instead of, you know, kind of now I feel I'm more in tune about my body and, and yeah. know it better and stuff. Mm. Um, but yeah, so that's, um, so dealing with injury was definitely, it's one of the most frustrating things for an athlete. It's so hard because your mind wants to do it. I want to get out and I want to push myself and I want to, be disciplined and I get, get up. I want to do all the stuff, but my body eventually gives up and says, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. I cannot keep blocking this out. Do you know, the other times I've gone just block out the pain and you could do it for so long, but mm. eventually, yeah, eventually your mind and your body and everything is just a mess because of it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah I know from, even from talking to you there, uh, Kate, you sound like this, like, like this is a really, really nice comment. You, you sound, for, well, not sound like him, but if you ever listen to Dorian Yates, he's very like um, like laser focused and focused on him only yeah. and an absolute perfectionist and everything he does. Now he is a yeah. bodybuilder and uses like steroids, so not that side of things. Okay. But, <laughs> yeah. in terms, but in he's one in terms of one of the best mindsets of any athlete I follow. He's one of my favorites and he's he's a cool okay. dude. But it's like it's really cool just to listen to you speak 
on the little details on everything that needs to be right and everything in particular to that. And which is really, it's really, really cool just even talking about that. Like, so like, yeah, it's li- really kind of, you're, you're nearly a little bit, um, self, not, I don't know what you call it, self centered, but in a way to do what you do, you, yeah, for me, I missed out on so many occasions and stuff because yeah. my training came first. And you know, people can couldn't understand, like, oh, you just take a rest day, or you just, but I'm like, no, if it's a rest day, there's other stuff to be done. There's mobility, there's stretching, there is mm. active recovery. Um, you know, I have to be in bed by this time. I have to be, that's the way it was. And it can be destructive then the way, whereas now I de- definitely have more of a balance. Mm. But yeah, you have to be, you see, I, like sometimes I, I find, you know, people um, look at sport and they think it's at the top level and they're like, wow, you know, you're, you're so uh, fit and active and healthy and it's great. <laughs> and sport can be the most destructive thing ever. And with people who have like, you know, massive issues mm. and it can, you know, it can be really, really toxic and the environment you're in can be, so it's funny how, yeah, people can easily, but it's like Anthony, you can easily look from the outside, you know, and think it's this way when it's really not. Yeah. So it's yeah, about, yeah. So it's funny how a lot of athletes get, you know, people look up to them and stuff mm. when a lot of their behaviors and their thought processes are actually not healthy. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I found that when I couldn't train, that was the problem with me when I couldn't train. And when I did get the injury, it was like, Oh, oh like, what do I do now? My whole identity was built on, on, um, you know, on sport and sport is cutthroat and it's hard and you have to be. Yeah. Yeah. And it, you know, it, it, it's the way it is as well. It's kind of, you know, you do, put, it is always pushing yourself to the, to its limits, you know? Mm. And yeah, but you just have to mind it because, um, for me, my mindset can get me definitely to be, I suppose, to be competitive and kind of nearly outperform myself, but it can also yeah. then go the opposite way, you know? Yeah. yeah so yeah. it's being aware of that and yeah. But and it is, my... it's laser focus and it's the little yeah. details. And the other thing as well now I would have done is I was looking, always looking for the, the, the new thing, the, the secret, the next, what's the best thing? What's the current, yeah. you know, what's the, um, and overcomplicating everything when, mm. and I, we all, I think, everyone even i have friends that you know why i just run a 5k or whatever and they come to me and they're, every, they're all over complicating it at the end of the day and i think this even virus at the moment is kind of like making us take a step back and see do you know what it's the simple simple yeah things yeah yeah done right consistently day in day out it's our lifestyle our routine our behaviors our habits our thought processes yeah. and it's just done day to day it's not um yeah, I would have overcomplicated. It's not real rocket science, you know. Mm. Um, but it's just, yeah, it's patience and and um, yeah. yeah. And it I is. think we, we look at some of these people, and people would have said it to me that, oh, you're just different. You just have a different mindset, and yes, to a certain degree. But people, people are different. Personalities are different. You know, it works for yeah. different people. Is it? But I am human and everyone else is human it's funny people look mm. up to people and think they ca- can't reach those heights or they can't yeah, do that. yeah yeah but or, or they might people would have looked at me and thought i would have, have had no struggles or they were really surprised when they read or heard about some of the stuff that i would have talked about they were surprised it was like um i was like yeah i'm human you know i yeah, have more issues than so. half of you who think yeah you know mm. it's funny we all kind of think that if we look at other people i suppose and we just make a judgment and we compare ourselves oh, yeah. and comparing our insides i suppose to their outside maybe and that's the problem with social media as well we just look at their pictures yeah. and compare what we're feeling to what they're portraying yeah. and stuff and that so and i think whatever level you're at whether it, that is just running a 5k if you can be you know set yourself the goal that's that's you know that applies to you and you mm. put in your you know you put in your effort um it's funny you can get the same satisfaction out of out of doing that then go, then going to olympics it's just yeah um, yeah yeah your goal now obviously your actions will have to match your goal but mm. um yeah people i suppose kind of think that some people there's a massive gap between say an athlete who's who's training for a certain event and then when there's not really you know yeah um, yeah there's not it's just their little everyday habits <laughs> yeah 100 percent, and like habits like habits form your life is yeah like evident you know bad habits can give you a shit life depending on how bad it is of course and good habits obviously will move your life in a positive direction in ter- like obviously let's talk about kind of the mindset in terms of say some bad habits you used to have 
in terms of yeah. your self-talk and some of the good habits you have now. So like, how did you transition from say, putting tremendous amount of pressure on yourself, but not being able to accept it and where you are now, where you have to find balance? Yeah, so it was actually a roller coaster. It's really going through. I've been through the whole circle and come back around, you know. So it's true yeah, experience, yeah. I suppose, is what I, um, because as I said, when I didn't have athletics and I didn't have my training and I was missing out on goals that I, in my head, um, the linear pathway wasn't going so linear anymore. Yeah. Then I became a different person, a person I hated. I ended up doing things that wasn't me and being so it's like you're looking for something else to replace it. So that's the funny thing as well about, about, you know, sport or the gym, it can be like an addiction, you know, mm. it's kind of like, what's it doing for you? What's it actually feeding? What are you actually feeling? And what are you blocking out? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So then I went to college and I had the injury and I ended up like, I would never have, I was so particular with everything, as I said, with food, with, um, just with everything that on, I, ended up like starting drinking I was about 19 maybe started drinking, like, and that for me was like oh my god and then really feeling guilty because I was doing that you know mm. so I had a wild few months then and mm. eating anything I wanted putting up weight and just mad just madness not really knowing who I was what I was hated athletics but also but secretly actually wanted to be back to be an athlete but, yeah 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 and then yeah it just kind of like not knowing who I was. It was just like my whole world was turned upside down. Do you know, yeah. you start hanging with different people. You just do things that are out of character. You, it was just madness. It was chaos. And you have no mm. clarity, I suppose, in your head. You, you know, I wasn't going to call lectures in college. I didn't care about that anymore. I wasn't disciplined. I wasn't motivated. I wasn't um, particular about that. And I went the complete opposite. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. It was funny. And everyone even around me would have been like, oh my God. It was like from literally from one extreme to the other, do you know? Mm. So it's probably true. All them, all those experiences um, has brought me because I feel like I've done it all. Kind of, you know what I mean? Yeah, I'd be yeah. This yeah. way, then I'd be at the complete opposite, and, and in between, it was like a roller coaster of ups and downs. And um, you know, it's not been plain sailing. But I suppose, as they say, healing or whatever isn't pretty or isn't you know. Um, and then I see. So yeah, I was kind of I had two years where I was kind of with the hip and all that and then I was like I'm gonna I'm gonna come back now um, yeah. my head was kind of ready to you know and I want to try and get to Rio to the Olympics in Rio and 2014 uh, so it was kind of two years out from the Olympics I was like mm. I'm gonna come back and I uh, was like um, training um, back training and I was kind of like getting sick when I was training and not feeling great and I was like oh but yeah. I just was like it's just my body getting used to training again, you know? Mm. And then I found out I was pregnant. That was like another, oh my God, you know, yeah. uh, moment, mad, madness. I was quite late when I found out I was in college, just my work, you know, it was just more kind of nearly chaos again. Yeah. That yeah. Was another. But then looking back, everything happens for a reason, you know? Mm. So, um, yeah, it's just interesting how, how life works out, I suppose. And then funny enough about the hip, then again, my pelvis and my hip uh, was at me all through that because you know it's funny when you have yeah, of course, you know, yeah. your body remembers things when you, when you have like a trauma to an area or, or an injury your body and thing you be so careful because that it will it's there and your body mm. and your mind your nervous system kind of remembers it you know and um then after having so that then my then perspective changed again you know so all these things happen to me and it's kind of like you know definitely having so uh, i have a little girl fiona she, um you know she then change my outlook on things yeah um, I came back then at, the funny thing I came back then training after having her and I just enjoyed athletics I didn't put any pressure on myself I didn't go walking I was like because mm. I started off running as a runner cross-country running so I was like I'm just gonna go back and run and enjoy it and I started yeah. to not care what people think because what was happening before that was I was expected to come back and I wouldn't race until I was doing the time I used to be doing before do you know yeah and when I couldn't do that, I was like, oh my God, like I would have done in 2011, say 21, 20 or something for 5k. Yeah. So then when I couldn't do that, when I was only doing 23 something mm. or whatever, I was like, oh my God, I can't um, do this because people are going to look at this time and think she's, you know, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Shit, like, or whatever again, you know, uh, because, and that isn't even a bad time, but in my head, it's a bad time. I need mm. to be doing 21 I wanted to be doing under 21 minutes, you know, walking it like, yeah. Um, and if I can't do that, then I won't, I won't do it because 
care what people think, I suppose. But I went back running anyway, and I just trained for the marathon with my dad. I went back running with him and just enjoyed it again. It kind of was yeah. like, wow, this is what it should be. And mm. that's what showed me as well. It doesn't have to be a high level that you are. I was just going out for Sunday morning, long runs with a, a group here and just no pressure on myself, you know? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. the satisfaction I got from running the marathon, the satisfaction from training for it um, was just so enjoyable. Because yeah. sometimes, you know, when you, you get so particular about training that it's kind of everything, again, is calculated and measured and you lose what it should be, especially running because it, and, and walking. It's kind of a natural, you know, it's so natural. Yeah, exactly, and it's kind of like yeah. what the cavemen did and it's, you know, out of with nature and it's the most, you know, primitive kind of thing, mm. you know, and you lose, you lose that because it becomes like, it just becomes, um, you know, I went through stages where my whole day and my whole mood and my feelings were all based on my time in the, in the session I was doing, mm. you know? or what my heart rates were or what my, and it's just a bad way to, I suppose, be. Yeah. So from all those experiences, then again, tried to go back walking at the end of that year. And it was, it was a kind of few messy months and years from 2016, then up to, up to yeah. now kind of, you know, there was yeah the ups and downs. I didn't get to what I, where I wanted to and stuff, but I've definitely, this is, um, I just learned so much. So I suppose, mm. The, yeah all about the mindset I think going through different experiences um and having kind of done it all you know because before it was kind of like oh well you're different you just don't do the usual stuff that we all do so yeah yeah yeah, yeah. You don't understand what it's like for this and that but then when I went and did all that kind of stuff it's like no I've I've been a mess I've done this mm. you think you're you think you're like you know I've yeah so it kind of gives me a different perspective and it makes me more relatable to everyone and then I can I can understand people so much more now as well yeah definitely, I can yeah. understand a lot of people at 15 or 16 you know and the way they acted and stuff mm. I could even understand it. I was like they're all why can't they just they need to be this they need to be that I had this kind of mm. like really um harsh view on things you know yeah uh, yeah very, yeah I had even no self-compassion or even empathy or whatever it was just very you know um you want to be the best then you have to you have to you know be yeah i suppose that this kind of war thing you know being a warrior and going to war yeah, yeah, there's yeah, no yeah. room for weakness that was the thing there was no room that you can't be weak you have to cop on you can't mm. be you know how about even crying or be no there was none of that like you have to harden up you know yeah, yeah. Um, and like i remember in my diary even back then like i write stuff down and being like don't be a pussy you know, this kind of yeah, stuff yeah 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 but now it's like no you have to um you have to accept your feelings and kind of like mm. and realize they're they're okay and explore them you know and kind of like uh, deal with the wounds and deal with the yeah so through all that then i now that's how i'm the way i am now i suppose yeah definitely yeah, yeah. and you're just kind of backtrack a bit um because i think when you're touching on there between 2012 and 2014 during college and stuff like that, obviously from the article just chatting to you there, those two years were obviously like, you know, low years, depression stage years yeah. and stuff like that. So like, how did you like explain what your depression felt like during those two years so and what were you doing? Interesting. Yourself? Yeah. God, it's so hard to explain. Yeah. Like, it's the hardest thing ever. And at the time, I was try, uh, trying again, trying to block it out and not accepting what it was and trying to just be like, just cop on and I couldn't get out of it. Mm. And because everything was changing and I um, was just becoming a different person and I wasn't able to, it was like, just go to class and cop on and do this and I couldn't get myself out of bed. And it was just, it was so scary. But I wouldn't reach out and talk about it, you know, because yeah, I didn't yeah, even know yeah. how I was feeling. Um, that you know there's a song is the lumineers like if they say it's better to feel pain than nothing at all kind of a thing yeah but i went through a time just feeling nothing and it's just a scary mm. weird thing of not caring about anything do you know yeah so for me a person who really was disciplined and really um yeah i suppose like i i loved life and i was a real kind of like energetic person mm. to be the complete opposite of that was a weird a weird place yeah yeah and, yeah but, but not being able to talk about it because i couldn't even express i couldn't even explain how i was feeling you know yeah and um then i would go out and stuff to try and block it out like so i could be in bed all day and it, it, that's the funny thing not go to class or whatever and then go out that night so it's funny that people can be like oh she's having it's fine she's only 
she's in college and she's after seeing another side to life she's enjoying herself you know mm. it's kind of and it's funny because that's not you know people would have looked they would have seen pictures on social media and whatever but that's not the way it was yeah just, yeah yeah you're, crutch, you're blocking things out you're um you don't really care i suppose you're just anything you can do to um yeah you don't even know how you're feeling you're, you can't deal with the emotions i suppose yourself you're not able to yeah so yeah you, yeah you just look for other things i suppose you know yeah um, but it's funny they'll see you out but then they don't see you that the next morning you know mm. when reality then get a hits again you know and you're back again in the vicious circle and as you said you know like your it affects everything so your whole life is when one thing is wrong and your head is not in a good place you don't have clarity you're not happy and it's just your 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 sleep pattern your routine your diet your lifestyle your every your relationships with everybody um I felt I turned into a horrible person even. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Onto with friends, block people out. Like, just, um, you go into your own little shell, I suppose, you know? And you, yeah, you just, you can't see, there was, you know, that's that's the thing that I, for people going through it, I suppose, that they, that there is a way out and there is light mm. at the end of the tunnel because I really didn't believe there was. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm spoken out, this is the way it is. I, I, nothing, nothing could get me out of it you know I tried different mm. things at the time and I was trying it was going on and on it was really getting worse and there was just nothing that would kind of you can run from your trying to run from the thoughts trying to run from your feelings all the time and nothing you know that's that's why you use other things to you can use them for so long to try to block block it out and make you feel better yeah. but they all come back they come back worse and worse and worse and worse and worse so then you get to a stage where you're like oh my god th- these things aren't even working for me anymore and you you're really scared of yourself or of your head or being being with your thoughts and and dealing with them do you know yeah and um yeah it becomes mad and you don't really know where it's going to end and i didn't really know i couldn't see any way out like you know mm. and um so looking back now i'm like oh my god i'm a completely different person now so that's just, you know, for people to, for them to keep going. Like, and the amount of things that I tried, like I, you know, that's one thing that was always a part of me that wouldn't give up. I suppose it was always a little part of me that was like, oh, you know, try this, try that, do this, yeah. you know. Um, that was always kind of there, I suppose. And you have to keep that, even if it's just 1% faith mm. in something or that you can come out of it, you have to keep that I suppose you know because I've been to so many different oh my god therapies and psychologists and I went into like nearly being a Buddha I'd say at one stage you know what I mean yeah 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 chakras then I was looking at I was look just trying to find you know, angel fucking stuff like and went to like a, a tarot tarot readers went to did hypnosis went to like clinical psychologists did CBT did I don't know talk therapy all different like you know because eventually, it wasn't me. At the time, I was blocking everything out, blocking everything out. I wouldn't talk about it, but it was people around me worried about me. Yeah, my friend yeah, yeah. in college saying it to me and my parents. And, and I nearly wasn't able to talk about it, but people who care about you, you you're, you're able to hide things for so long, but eventually you have to give in and be like, yeah, I need help. I don't know what even what's gone wrong with me or whatever, but you need to give in to that. And I ended up going to hospital. Um, mm. and that's how bad it got I suppose when I went to to a psychologist or whatever straight away they were like you're that day they admitted me and I was like no how am I going in there it's funny or you're like I'm not you know that thing of like I'm not mad I shouldn't be going in there <laughs> Do yeah, I yeah, need yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. but I did you know I did need it and the funny thing was it's not just you went for like a six-week program or whatever it is to anything and you're better you come out and you're better that's not it either people yeah, kind of yeah. think oh I should be all cured now doesn't work that way there was still madness after that you know there was still like mm. you might call it relapses or whatever and it's still something you have to constantly work on um and yeah i think people just need the patience you know and to be and to be under try to understand themselves a bit more you kind of have to go through the the shit like as i said healing is impression you kind of have to go through the you have to deal with what the stuff that's gone on and talk about it and and be honest you have to be honest with yourself because on how you're feeling honest with others you know and then kind of open up I suppose and eventually things start sticking I suppose eventually you know yeah Um, yeah 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 and I think you can learn something from everyone 
you know, I met a lad, a lad in hospital that uh, was bringing a similar enough story to me. Um, a rug, good rugby player hurt his back quite a serious back injury that he couldn't play rugby. And you know what's funny? There's always someone worse than you. And I yeah. even felt bad at times because I was like, I am making myself out this big traumatic experience. So, you know, when there's so much worse things in life. But then the other side of it is that to you, it's okay to be like, it's traumatic to you. You know, to me, when my identity of legacy was taken away from me, that was like a, a part of me died, you know? Mm. A part of me was, was missing and I couldn't find that part of me again or something. So, yeah. Then I remember a psychologist said to me, it's okay that you, because I, I feel really guilty, like, because people have things way worse. I really don't have it, you know, that bad. I have so much other good stuff going on in my life. But, but she was like, no, but to you, you know, that is so big. So to you, that is traumatic and you can accept mm. it, you know. And then you start, yeah, little by little, I suppose, dealing with things and um, understanding yourself more. I think self-awareness, you know, and yeah, understanding yeah, yeah. your personality and what triggers you and accepting accepting it because i was like i don't want to be this way i hate myself but you have to have that yeah it's like everything in the world if you read like give out good vibes and 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 that whole like that whole spread love kind of thing that's what you need you know what i mean and that needs Mm. to start with yourself because if you can't even love yourself and 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 look look at your weaknesses and your strengths and um then you you can't be the best version of yourself for the world i think people need to work on themselves first before they can be anything because then you have so much everyone has so much to give to the world but you have to be your true authentic I suppose, self first yeah 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 and, and it's just learning all the time through everyone and um yeah i think that realizing your thoughts are just your thoughts and stuff that was a big thing for me so i would be the control thing for me was the thing not being able to control you know because always I was able to control everything and I was, loved that feeling. And I would, went through periods then of, of um, trying to control everything. And when I couldn't, catastrophizing it, you know? Yeah. So that became a control thing with food, was massive for me, a control thing with alcohol. Um, yeah, again, you're using, you know, and when you lose that control, then you're the guilt, the shame, the embarrassment, the kicking yourself about it, you know? And the all or nothing kind of a thing. And just destructive behavior. It's like you're being mm. really like disrespectful to yourself and you don't even care. Because I was in doing sports science, learning about all this kind of stuff about being healthy and, and your mindset and health. And the stuff I was the stuff I put my body through and the stuff I've done to my body, you know, it's it's yeah. self destruct you know, just it's destruction exam and you don't really care. It's like um, you know, I um yeah, it's like, it's, it's hard, it's self-harming, you know what I mean? It's, it's just another mm. form, I suppose. And another thing I learned as well, like, it's funny, through different people, that no matter what you do or your, whatever your coping mechanism is, whether it's alcohol, drugs, uh, I don't know, like food, gambling, um, mm. self-harm, whatever it is, a lot of the stuff stems back to the same kind of, you know, thought processes and, and yes. you know, so I was able to relate to people who would have done other things say gambling or whatever even though that would never have been that I would have done I can relate to that person because I it's funny how it's kind of the same stuff that comes yeah. up we're all just using different things to try and um I suppose we're trying to I don't know make ourselves feel better or you know and it, I suppose there's a difference between kind of like I think you want to uh did you have something on there on your um Instagram it is about like um happiness and Oh, pleasure. pleasure. I think there's a difference. Yeah, happiness or, yeah, happiness or pleasure. And it's kind of like yeah. that short term pleasure and that short term rush and that short term adrenaline. We're all searching for this kind of like, yeah, because we're all searching for these highs. And that was the mm. thing with me the highs and the lows were hard to deal with. I was searching for these highs all the time and I couldn't get them. Um, or you get them, but then you come back to the lows again. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And you're searching for that high again. And it's like nothing's really doing it for you that's sustainable. And now I see that if exercise we could be put into a pill how it, we could be doing it so we'd all be uh it'd be the most yeah. prescribed pill in the world because it's funny that it's yeah you're going outside the comfort zone and it's i suppose it's um embracing the pain or whatever and all that and it's kind of like it's kind of misery it can be misery at times but there's pleasure in that yeah but there's it's, it's a good type of you push yourself to it you know it's it's uh, a proper natural high and it's what yeah, our bodies yeah, yeah, yeah. Us, now they don't even know how good we should feel we don't know how good our bodies should feel we don't know what's normal anymore 
Mm. And that's the way I felt like I didn't know how I should be feeling. Um, and how what our bodies are designed for movement and designed to um, be active and what that gives us for our physical and mental health. Like it's just yeah, yeah, massive. Yeah. And I know that now from trying everything else, <laughs> you know, I've gone back to obviously being biased with exercise because I, that's my, my thing, but just for everyone to, um, yeah. It, and you have to go outside your comfort zone with all this kind of stuff. And you have to be honest with yourself. And you have to look at yourself because we can all, we can all kind of like t- the story we tell ourselves, you know, we can all kind of mm. like, we all have our own little narrative in our heads and, and we have to nearly, um, come out of that narrative sometime and challenge our thoughts and our, you know, but yeah, with the thoughts as well, as I said, I would let the thoughts, my feelings nearly over run me and take control. Yeah. Whereas to realize that, you know, accept them, that it's okay. And that's the thing, even with mindfulness and meditation, that it's like, it's normal. We're humans and we are, we're kind of mad. Humans are a bit mad. Anyway, we're all, we all have our, yeah, you know, yeah. our mad moments and um, that, you know, now it's like, you know, the, our monkey or our cheap part of our brain, that's our first thought. We don't have to be impulsive. I would have been quite impulsive and yeah. go with that thought or feeling or freak out or why am I feeling like this or why am I and be annoyed with myself? But like mm. that, that's just a thought. That's just a, our brain. Um, cause our brain really sometimes will want us to go back into our old behaviors and our old patterns, you know, and, and make us feel like it's okay. You know, just, you can justify doing anything, I suppose, you know, that, oh, look, it's yeah. okay. You can, um, whereas you have to nearly take the thought, nearly take it out, look at it, you know, and, and, um, analyze, I suppose, and, um, go with, it's like the second you know, the second thought, or we have to kind of like, yeah, let's just analyze it. And um, so that's something I do now. It's, it's all just kind of awareness and uh, knowing your little triggers and what, you know. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. It's all that kind of stuff. And it's all learning along the way. And I love that, that I've kind of having that growth mindset where you're like, you want to learn all the time and you you know you don't know it all and you're open minded about things and you, ha- you adapt yeah, this yeah, non judgmental yeah. view on the world. Mm. And I would have even judged others before I feel you know, because people would annoy me if they would say they were going to do something or they, and they weren't doing it or they were maybe had a talent or had it and they were going down the wrong, you know, and I'd be like, look at them. They need to cop on now. They have, yeah, you know, yeah, what are yeah. they doing? They need to. But now it's like, no, I, I love that now that I wouldn't judge anyone because you know, everyone, and that's the thing, like, um, I know psychologists said this to me as well, like no one is, I suppose, you know, what's saying and what's healthy and what's, normal that everyone has issues everyone is struggling we're all on like a journey so we're yeah, all yeah, a process yeah. um i love like listening to some of the russell brand stuff as well we're all we all have shit like to deal with yeah 100 percent yeah 100 percent. that we're all human and i think so it's nice to yeah have that just yeah just be non-judgmental i think is mm. is nice and to ourselves as well like and not just yeah to, yeah yeah, to, yeah. The whys, why are people doing this? The reasons behind, you know, behaviors and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And um, and then yeah, no, that's absolutely incredible points there you gave, Kate. Then I you know, a bad tangent to talk about like ten things at once. It's just like what's coming to my head. <laughs> but, you know. Oh. I know that there's plenty of gold nuggets for people to take out anyway. So that's the main thing. I made enough mistakes. You see, it's all. On about it. it's like the mistakes you make and and now not looking at them as failure i think that's the thing as well you look at them as okay it's okay to make mistakes oh yeah it's and, and it's bit... fuck up like that it's okay mm. to do that yeah yeah and um just want to touch on you know so when you kind of go back into training what around 2014 after the when it comes when, when you're in college i mean found out you're pregnant how did your life kind of change then basically and like, how were you feeling at that moment? How was it, yeah. you know, affecting you now, for example? And it's mad because, you know, um, a funny thing is, I, when I found out I was pregnant, I didn't even think anything of it. As in, at the start, sorry, I didn't even believe I could be. So like yeah. I said, I missed my period and I didn't think anything of it because I was like, um, and that's, that's the other thing about sport, right? It nearly becomes unhealthy. You don't care what you do to your body. You don't care how destructive you are. So when I was, when I was at my... I wouldn't have got a period until I was about 19, which was quite late, mm. maybe 18 and a half. But that to me, I didn't care. I know of a doctor saying to me, oh, this isn't, you know, healthy. But I didn't care. And I didn't get it because of the training I was doing. Because yeah, of what yeah. I was putting my body through. And I was like, I don't, 
I'm like, man, I don't care. And the ironic thing, he was like, you won't be able to have kids if you keep going this, pushing your body all the time, you know? And I, mm. so the funny thing is that how easy a kid end up getting pregnant. But um, yeah, so you kind of, again, I was back training and I didn't get it. So, but I didn't, it was kind of like, oh yeah, I'm back. Yes, it was kind of like, oh, this is good. Because I pushed my body to its limits, you know? Yeah. Um, and you, you, it's like winning at all costs kind of thing. You don't really care what you're doing to your body. It's, and it's another yeah, 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 yeah. sport that maybe comes unhealthy, you know. Um, and it's like, what it, that's what why people I think have to be careful. So I'm going off the top now. Again, I'll come back to it there. <laughs> <laughs> people I know some some of the lads, even I, I some friends, one or two lads, looking at these bodybuilder lads, you know, that I've looked into, mm. and I know they're taking steroids and all this, and they want to be them. And they're asking me. I one 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 of the lads told me, he's like, "Kane, I know now you're gonna you're gonna give out to me, but just honestly tell me what you think about this steroid. Don't even go by getting them like." And I was just like, oh my God. Like, so people are prepared to just take whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and not mean. care the consequences and not just to reach. And we look for shortcuts and stuff, people, you know, do. Mm. And it's just funny, yeah, that our mindsets when we get into a, yeah, that we, and, and if that's the problem, I suppose, with some people following some, some of these people on social media, because it's not real. Yo, 100%. You know? And as well, you look at the shredded bodies and stuff and, that's not sustainable, you know, you know, with, with the bodybuilder or with someone in the gym about bulk and cutting and it's not sustainable that they keep at that body fat or that percentage or yeah, yeah, yeah. ripped the way they are. And we look at that and think that's normal when it's not, you know, and it, can, it causes, and it's a lot of, I mean, lads recently used to be kind of a girl thing with body issues and stuff, but now it's lads as well. We're looking at this and comparing and thinking we need to be, yeah, this. So yeah, we go to extremes. But anyway, go back to, Go back to, yeah, for now I was pregnant. So I was just kind of like, oh my God, I can't be like, hey, you know, and, and then, then it got to, now looking back and I'm like, the, it's funny how um, the chances of me getting pregnant because I was taking the pill and I was 100% proper mm. taking it, um, the chances of even getting pregnant were so slim, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And as some things happen, it's like, you know, you, you hear people trying for years, trying to, and the chances were like, so slim so it's like some things are just meant to happen I suppose mm. but um it was actually one of the best things for me because when I was going I went back training but I was still in real destructive all or nothing kind of behaviors and I wasn't I, I was still wasn't even though it's funny I was channeling it into training but I was going back to my nearly old ways of being um particular about everything you know which mm. isn't healthy either and um it was just a bit of madness whereas then being pregnant I was like I have to it was like it's like nearly a higher power or something you know yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Oh, now that was the the healthiest i've been when i was pregnant it was the healthiest the way i treated my body because i had to eat eat properly mm. and not be start not eating for for two or three days because i needed to lose weight and then binging on rubbish and yeah. then and then drinking because i feel guilty about it and then then punishing myself i would have done things like if i ate before i've been pregnant if i ate bad i'd go to the gym for like i'd say in the gym now in dublin they must be like this one they all knew as well but i was <laughs> go to the gym for four hours right and i'd have to like punish myself yeah and and put myself through pain and that that made the injury worse then as well because yeah, i wasn't yeah, doing, yeah. i was doing the rehab but on top of that i was doing mad stuff that i shouldn't have been doing but i would it's like another you have to feel it was just to feel something Mm. so to, to hurt myself in the gym to put my body through torture and then I'd feel broke up and that would be a good feeling because I'm like yes I made myself feel you know mm. um then you you're you're wrecked so you're in bed you're wrecked and you don't eat properly or something after that training session because you're trying to, to lose weight and then the next day yeah. your body's is is all over the place so you go and self-sabotage again you go eating rubbish and you, you binge on shit like Mm. And then it's like, oh my God. And it's just a cycle of madness. Or you go drinking and then you feel guilty and you, you know? Yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's yeah. all these behaviors. So being pregnant stopped those behaviors because I was mm. like, oh yeah, you know, you can't. so it was actually the healthiest my body was. And do you know what the funny thing was as well? And because I wasn't on the scales every day and stuff like that. Yeah. Because you, you had to eat for nutrition and for mm. fuel and for to be healthy and to, for your body, for health. It was and you go out and you exercise like you 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 don't pu push yourself in with your exercise because you can't now because it's you've someone else to, to yeah. look after kind of a thing you know 
um yeah so it's probably the healthiest uh more balanced i've been kind of you know mm. because you kind of need you have i had to even though when it was hard at times i was like but you have something else to and because of it happening um and other people what people would say as well or what i was like god you, you kind of these are the cards you're dealt with so it's kind of like now i have to now for a while it was you know proved to myself i know it's bad you know proven to others but for a while i was like yeah i have to show everyone that i'm not because again i would i looked at some people would have thought that i was a failure again mm. being like oh look at her now that the the soup little superstar you know people in the town said oh and look look you know she would have been the last person in school we would have thought would have got pregnant at 20 like you know yeah 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 and this kind of thing is like oh, i'll show you my life you know that i can yeah do you know and it made me more determined because i then it's like that you your life isn't over and people would have thought oh she'll just be she i remember someone saying to me oh you won't be able to go back to college now will you and i was like yeah i will why won't i you know kind of a thing they thought what i just kind of like settled in dungarvan and stay there for the rest of my life and yeah yeah kind of settle for mediocre you know and that's okay too if you're happy sometimes look there uh, another thing a funny thing uh, in school one day i was asking them all about what they wanted to be and one boy said to me uh miss neil he's like i just want to be happy i just want a simple life because that's a happy life and i was like yeah that's actually nice so sometimes you know but uh, but anyway I, I do feel some we all have a, a purpose and a passion we need to go for that but anyway i mean we're determined um so i went to college that year pregnant and even again like i felt now maybe it's me over analyzing things but i felt everyone was looking at me in college yeah you know? And I was in an athlete's house um, with other athletes. And then I just felt in my course or whatever it was, like people knew me as the athlete and had these expectations of me. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then, yeah, and I felt people were like looking at me like, you know, or, um, mm. but, but, you know, you just, and then after having Fianna, I had, four days later I had exams to do in college and I remember a lecture email, emailing me being like you know you can just defer your exams and I was like no no I'm doing them you know yeah yeah so yeah, yeah. we're determined to show and yeah I suppose look times have changed but I, I think particularly yeah I, I love the whole feet, girls in sport and I've done a lot of stuff on that and just mm. to show that women and girls and mothers yeah can you know gone are the days where you're just like you have children and you stay in the house kind of a thing mm. But there's options and you have to prove you know you can so it's for yourself like but for me it was kind of like um and and now it's kind of showing her it's another um i want her to look back and say wow you did all this yeah, definitely, you know? yeah and just definitely. So you can um that there's yeah not to put limits on yourself and you whatever circumstances there's always a way around things you know mm. there's always there's always options and to realize there's always um i suppose solutions to problems that's you know the way i kind of look at things now and sometimes you have to search for those solutions you don't just go to if there's something wrong you know like even on that psychology side of things you don't just go to one psychologist or one doctor and and then that be it and give up no there's you have to search for it you know you have to yeah, try yeah, things yeah. out you find it works for you. you have to always want to get better and you have to take control of that and you can't put that in somebody else's hands put it into a do you want know, to went to the hospital i was kind of leaving it in their hands you know yeah oh, you but no you have to do the work on yourself it all starts with you mm. um yeah, so I say it definitely it does change your your perspective on everything, you know. Mm, um, totally. And, and I suppose, yeah, and then you know as well you see what's important in life as well, and that's why I think this virus for people is good too because you can think you can see another side to life and what's actually mm. important because you get so caught up in your goals and your and um and you know sometimes you you look what is success really? I was yeah. wanted to be successful and I had to be. And I'm here saying, oh, don't settle for mediocre. But then there's a, 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 a kind of a, yeah, it's like being a hypocrite. There's a fine line between, you know, I think people shouldn't just settle, but also mm. should, you need to like, I suppose, look, have gratitude is a, is a massive thing. Appreciate all the, the simple things. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what, where true happiness comes from. And I would have got so caught up in a goal that and it, it happened to me again last year. It happened to me again last year. Like went back to the whole thing of like, the, it's like for this year, the Olympics, right? The world was ending. At, I had the date of when the race walk, when the 20 kilometer yeah, yeah, yeah. race was on, and everything was going along um, until then, like mm. all my life decisions. And you swear the world was that, yeah, and it was kind of like a bad way to look at things again because it's that all or nothing, and it's you lose sight of what's really important, like the you know, and and keeping your circle small. It's like who cares what 
everyone else thinks or what, what what your decisions in life are, what you decide to do or, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, because who, at the end of the day, you think people care or, but they're on to somebody else or talking about somebody else the, the next day, you know? Mm. So you kind of lose sight of keeping your circle small, you know? Yeah, it's so 100% important agree with having that. having real people because it's funny, we can have all these friends and all these, and it's funny through being out drinking and stuff, right? You'd have your friends, right? But they were like my, they're just my, 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 my drinking friends. friends. Yeah, it's kind of like friends, a superficial yeah. friendship where it's like, are they really there for, are they true friend? Like, you know, would you go to them if you really needed them or whatever for, and it's like, no. So it's funny yeah, how 100%. you think it's, it, it's funny how the drinking as well, you think you're socializing and it's, it's fun and it's, you're being so, you know, you're, you're, and it's, you know, look, there's been great times drinking and great crack and great memories, but it's, um, yeah, it's it nearly isolates you more. It makes you more lonely, yeah, kind of a 100%, thing. Yeah. It's like being lonely in a crowded room, do you know, kind of a thing. Or, or and um, you wake up the next day and and you're alone again. And then friends actually aren't there for there you because you. you can't talk about your real thoughts with them. You know, yeah. it's all about having the crack and having the laugh and and yeah. But it's and it's all fun and games and it's all laughing about what happened or who did what and. But and you go to the house party and you keep drinking and it's but, but then after that it's like oh yeah yeah it's not real and so now it's kind of seen having the real people like in your life and kind of environment yeah. is key like who you hang around with because oh your vibe it is your vibe attracts your tribe and who you're around and um you know being around good people is just so infectious you know and again yeah, being around toxic people dealing with dealing with toxic people and kind of accept if you start accepting that do you know what i mean that's how your life yeah. will be if you you have to kind of get yourself out of that get yourself out of that rut and not be with those kind of people and look i'm not saying you know then there's that people are airy fairy about the whole oh just think positive and just be that's yeah like i do get it that life is shit sometimes you know what i mean and it is it's shit and it's tough and it there's off there's hard days but um it's like you know kind of accepting that and realizing and knowing that the shit days will be there it's a roller coaster mm. like you know and but trying to just um kind of uh, not even turn them into a positive but just see some positive see something positive in every day and have gratitude for the things that you do have you know and it yeah and, and doing the little simple things that you can do, you know, because we all worry about stuff that are outside our control all the time. It's like we worry, I would have worried about 90% of things I worried about have never happened, you know, mm. but then you get yourself into this anxiety um, as well. Like, you know, and, and again, anxiety is another thing that I would have had and I was able to channel it into training and racing. Yeah. So I, it's funny. I loved being anxious before a race and, now realizing but yet when it used to come to me then in other ways in other situations mm. i'd freak out it would make me freak out into panic um but you see it's all these things becoming aware of all these things now i suppose so um yeah anxiety then is a massive thing that we're dealing with in in today's world as well like and it's it's like in one way we've come so far in science and we're we're advancing and in another way it's so sad because we're going we're really losing connection, you know? Yeah, and I, I read a thing recently that the opposite of, of addiction is not like um, sobriety or not um, being clean or whatever. It's actually the opposite is connection. And I found that mm. brilliant. Like, uh, just interesting that it's because we're f trying to fill a void with other things or fill something in our hearts or whatever that we're missing, you know? Well, so the so reason why a lot of people are addicted to social media is because they're lacking connection in their life. Is that what that means? Yeah, and it could be addiction to, addiction to anything. Oh, whatever anything. it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, but yeah, as well. But yeah, it's not a... It's 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 like then we could search for that social media connection, but it's not a real connection. Mm. Yeah, yeah, And social yeah, media yeah, is a great yeah. tool. Don't get me wrong. Oh, my God. The, the amount of things that we can get us from social media is brilliant now. Like, you know, yeah. it's like literally the stuff that you're putting out there and how it helps yeah. people. And it's we, we can talk about... Because everything... I feel in the last few years how just things like mental health and everything was just stigmatized because we couldn't talk mm. about it and i thought i was so weird and i was the only one dealing with these things it's where i was the only one in the world dealing with all these like demons mm. and, and no one understands me and i'm so de and it's the, everyone is dealing with you know it's yeah, normal yeah, and we yeah. need to normalize it like yeah um, definitely but but just in general that we're kind of missing back to nearly our roots of like the caveman stuff like we were born into like 
we should be in tribes, you know what I mean? And yeah, close yeah, connections yeah. and groups and where we're there for each other and we hundred percent have each other's backs and it's it's not even we're living in this big city lot it's kinda of in the cities now and it's like uh rush, rush, rush and whereas we were meant for like just smaller kind of tribes, you know? And they yeah. and we we've lost, I suppose, yeah, just um yeah, because like I said, in one way, we've become so modern with everything. And we've learned a lot and science is advancing. But then in another way, we're not getting some of the stuff, you know? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, 100%. There's a disconnection between things. Mm. And I think you made a good point there as well with social media. That it's a tool where people actually yeah. look at social media as if it's the be all, end all. How many followers, how many likes to get. What this sort person comes on their post <laughs> or whatever. But yeah, yeah just for the, good, the people listening or watch it depending if it's on YouTube or Spotify social media is a tool not a platform to spend your whole life on or to believe that everything on it is good so just always remember that as well and obviously this is some yeah. via technology but social media is a tool so use it that way rather than do that you know promote good stuff educate yourself try and get good content in chat but don't be looking at it as looking at a bodybuilder taking steroids putting up a picture of and trying to compare yourself to them like your friends are currently in the midst yeah. of doing but that's not yeah. just your friends that's the fuck ton of people that are in the middle of that yeah and we're all kind of searching we're looking for what other people are and comparing it's kind of looking at yeah. it as a following the right people again following the real people who are real and honest and authentic you know about yeah, real life because we're following people we want to be them instead of like you know you're, you're the only one of you so i don't people need to kind of tune you know what makes you you like kind of a thing yeah you know? yeah yeah and embrace that in our individuality and that's the ticket to our success and what makes us you know and mm. it's kind of like we want to be somebody else all the time and we're looking at even like you know things mean their pictures are photoshopped and you know and it's yeah, and yeah, i yeah. feel i even seen school i had sixth class last year for just subbing some of the year and how i worry for them because it's gone it's getting worse and worse you know they're looking at things yeah, yeah, yeah. It's becoming, and it's causing people just anxiety and the way they yeah so it's not the real world you know and it's with, with everything then we have like everything is great once it's done in the right way yeah you know like yeah. social media is brilliant once it's done the right way and then again even on it talking to a friend recently about the likes of like um like dating sites you know about tinder and stuff it's funny how mm. it can cause so someone in a relationship or whatever that they have an argument or whatever and and it's nearly people don't work on things anymore it's kind of like they can literally be on on tinder the next day and yeah. be getting somebody else and thinking not how they don't people don't know what they want then or what yeah nothing can make them happy it's like they're looking then for the ne- you know they want the best of both worlds and they want mm. everything and then we can just easily it's like we kind of sometimes can get things too easily you know yeah and, yeah yeah um, it's like the cheap thrills you know and Pleasure. it's not real kind of you know and it, it causes us then to be back in a place back again it's not true connection or true happiness yeah so yeah I know what you mean. Cheap, cheap thrills and it's good and it's it's like you get a bit of validation or whatever and and then you're back but then you're back again instead of actually working on yourself it's like it could become a um you know i don't know to make just to make ourselves feel okay again Mm. so people going through breakups instead of actually trying to deal with it or deal with or and being happy with themselves as well doing their own shit like yeah they can go on and have someone say this to them or that and we meet up with someone once and or whatever they want and then it can seem fine it's another kind of it's another crutch or a distraction and then again a week later they're back to their you know yeah yeah okay. uh, so going on the official circle of sabotage yeah all the time and um but yeah so it's, it's just about kind of looking at things in the right way i suppose but we're yeah, all yeah. kind of looking at we all want what we can't have and it's like the gra- the faraway hills are not always greener you know the grass isn't always green on the other side mm. um i had someone that one of my friends went away couldn't wait to go away to australia and was like oh, get out of this town this town's only you know full of this yeah, full yeah, of that. Yeah, yeah. and um like it's not the town you know what i mean you you have to yeah, deal with you. your yeah you know, it, you think you, by going over here, your whole life will change. And it's, and you know, it's yeah. not always, yeah, the way you kind of, um, yeah, just it's our perspective and the way we look at things, I suppose, and our outlook yeah. on, on life. And that's why, that's why I think, look, this, uh, 
you know, lockdown can be good for some people to, it's like that whole, you know, you improvise and adapt and you overcome, but it can be yeah, good yeah. to take a step back because we all are even just mad lives. We think we all have to be busy all the time. And mm. um, there's just pressure coming from everywhere, every angle, pressure. And pressure of society. It's funny how, you know, like uh, people, society says this is the way it should be, but it's just what your, it's just what your society is saying the way it should be. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. Uh, and we think things should be done in this linear fashion. Even over Christmas, I do it myself. I was freaking out. I was saying to one of my friends, like, oh my God, everyone our age is, is getting married. And, and yeah, yeah. <laughs> buying houses buying, I was like buying houses and you know like and it's like yeah but you know there's no set rules as to what way things should be done we have pressure on even pressure on going to college pressure on mm. what we what they get their leaving sir pressure on what their career is what car they're yeah. driving you there and it's like keeping up with the joneses all the time and it's just it, it's madness yeah and we all yeah. kind of do it to a certain degree i suppose you know but yeah. it's all back to like i was in doha in um, september and i remember uh, being over there September October and uh just the the reception of the way boy the men were some of the men were to um there's a group there and it's all it's a ma it's boys say a high performance sports group yeah there's no girls in it but even me out training I just went about my normal training with my shorts and my whatever and I got beeped at and whistled at and I got comments and I got you know and at the time, once or twice, I was kind of like, fuck ye, I'll, you know, women empowerment and all that. I'll, yeah, you, know, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, the way the men are, were, you know, but then I was kind of like, oh, but that's that they don't know any diff. That's the way they're yeah, yeah, up yeah. there. And then I kind of wanted to understand them. You know, it's like I'd love to talk to them and nearly understand what way mm. that because that's just their society and how they're brought up. It's not you know, who says what's yeah. right, and what's wrong or whatever. But mm. it's funny how we can look at other people then and be horrified and think, oh my God, look what they do over there. Do you yeah, know? yeah, yeah, people yeah, yeah. People are brainwashed and how we, people can get, we can all get brainwashed, you know, um, into a certain way of thinking. And we have to challenge those thoughts, I suppose. And um, that be open-minded about things and not just because conform to because this is the way it was. And maybe in Ireland, probably the way it was, was the whole Catholic church thing, maybe. Oh yeah, yeah, hundred percent, yeah. So this is the way things are and you know and then then again not giving out about the passion we could give out about say the older generation say oh they think this and they think that but but that's the way then they were brought up yeah it's funny exactly how, yeah on about how things are even traumas or whatever are passed down through generations like yeah. families and stuff and it's so interesting like that about even stuff from from some people they need to go back to childhood um mm and deal with even issues from there and why it is the way it is. And not, you know, it's kind of like as well, I heard some people put the blame on their parents. Well, if you're going to put the blame on your parents, you need to blame them for all the good stuff that they did yeah, as well. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. They all kind of are doing what's best and it's hard for us to see that at times or whatever, but mm. it's like, why are they the way they are? Or why is this yeah. person, or why, you know, did this happen? Um, and we can say, oh, this person's a horrible person and this person did this and this person did that, but we have to look at why yeah exactly what yeah. and what was their thought processes and um yeah and it is hard to break that cycle you know for because you see it going down through generations and kids end up a certain way because their parents are a certain way yeah. or, you know, blah 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 um but it's kind of nearly going back and looking at the reasons of why this is yeah yeah because that's, 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 that's a complex. Really good point. Always, yeah you know it's, it's um and i think that's why it's good now and in ireland in the past we were definitely wouldn't talk about things you know and it was everything yeah. swept under the carpet and was all things weren't and it was hard people just had to uh, live with their you know like and it's I, I read a some kind of a quote recently it's like you're a, you're only as going to be as sick as the secrets that you keep or something like that you know yeah yeah so yeah you keep yourself and people were damaged like from it mm. whereas now i hope that by people talking and it's even like things like your platform and what you are doing that people can become more oh it's okay like to talk and feel this mm. way and there is other people out there like this and um and this, this is real life, like, yeah, yeah, do you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can all ha want this little fairy tale kind of like, you know, but it's not real, I suppose. Yeah, no, definitely. No, yeah, no, Katie, that's given a fuck ton load of value there. Like, really, really appreciate it. I just um, know I'm going off in tangents a lot of the time. And I know, I'll, as I said, I'll uh, end up now tonight being like, oh, I should have mentioned that point. I should have mentioned <laughs> this point. But, yeah. Ah, but, yeah, uh, sure. Should we get you on another time? You know, no issue at all. Yeah, I think for another thing, I just think of there for everyone enjoying the process and in the here and now. I would have lived a lot in the past, lived a lot in the future. So it's kind of like 
going back to your past, what I should have, could have, would have done. Yeah, should yeah, have been yeah. And kicking myself from being like, oh my God, the regrets and they eat you up. And I was this before, so I need to be this again. And then again, like, all about the future, it was like, for me, it was the Olympics. I was like, uh, if I don't get to the Olympics, I'm a failure. I have to get there. I have yeah, to yeah, do or yeah. die. And it's, but you have to just enjoy the process, you know, it's the, it's the journey. It really is, you know, it's mm. kind of, we have this deferred kind of happiness plan. Like, Oh, I'll be happy when I'll be happy yeah, when yeah, this. Yeah. I'll be happy. When. And it never comes. You have to find the happiness in the here and the now obviously you have your goals, but um, we all kind of really want to go from A to Z, like, a, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Sort of like A to B, it's like a step by step by step, and be consistent. And that's maybe with the modern world, we're not patient with things anymore because it's, yeah. we are looking at the fast. I suppose getting things quickly, and it doesn't work that way. It's such a slow. It's a grind, and it's yeah. and people, people that will look as well. They uh, something something someone recently said to me about motivation. Um, they're all like, oh my God, you're so motivated. And I'm like, I'm not always motivated. It's not motivation mm. so fickle. Yeah. There's times I hate what I'm like. I remember being on camp in Spain, like up a mountain. And one morning I woke up and I was like, oh my God, I can't believe it's the morning. I have to get up and, you know, train. I really want to yeah, do this. Yeah, it's kind of yeah, like, yeah. you make your decision and you follow through on it. Your actions have to match what you said you do. And it's kind of like, you then it's kind of, okay, I don't have a, this is what I want to do. I get to do this. You know, you're changing mm. your, I'm lucky that I get to do this. And it's, it's um, building a work ethic more than motivation because there's days you don't want to, you know, go out and do yeah, you discipline. Build it into your lifestyle, into your routine. And, um, you know, and, and you actually, yeah, it's, it's stretching yourself all the time, you know, and then putting in the actions and through the actions, then will come more motivation and come confidence and come. And then you just repeat the process. And you kind of take it one day at a time. You know, it's like, mm. okay, what can I do today to make myself a better person? And you do the same again tomorrow. And it's the little steps. Yeah, and yeah, it's yeah, slow, yeah. slow process. And you reflect back on things. And you are careful with the stories you say to yourself. And what you, you know, yeah. And um, you just, yeah, that's it. Every day, just the simple little things. I think that's yeah. the Baby steps. Every yeah. day. No, that's a good way of looking at it. Um, I have one more question for you, Kate, before I finish up. Yeah. And I do appreciate it. And for anybody listening as well, obviously, um, what points you found extremely valuable from Kate? Send myself a message, send her a message, let us know what you think, because that'll help myself elaborate maybe a bit more on, a, on another yeah. podcast. It'll help more people out. But it, like, we're, obviously, you're, you're touching a fuck ton of value there, Kate. And you seem like a very energetic, happy, kind hearted person. What what's your definition of happiness oh that's a that's a difficult one uh oh my god uh, i think well i don't don't know if i have a quote now that would say exactly what happiness is but i yeah. think for it's happiness it's funny it has to just come from the simple simple day-to-day come from within because I think I before this I would have said oh I'm gonna be happy I'm gonna be happy when I'm successful and when I've mm when I've done this and I look back and I'll be happy because I'll be proud of myself and I'll make yeah, yeah, people yeah. around me proud and I will do it for them. And, you know, and that you, it, that isn't real happiness. It's, it's all the, you know, the people that, that you love and care about and, and whether it's family or friends and it does, it's a small circle of people. Um, and it's kind of like finding happiness in the simplest of things. Like, me go I think we're all we're not enough in nature safe so for me um obviously now again maybe for me running is my kind of was my thing because it brings me back to childhood so for yeah. me just running out in a forest like there's a there's a forest near me and I was out running there they're running on the beach running in a field mm. so that kind of stuff and being at one with nature because we're all at the end of the day how you know uh I don't know if some people have read The Alchemist or The Secret or The Power, some of those books. And it's interesting how we're all, um, Joe Rogan has talked about stuff as well, how we're all kind of at one. Oh, like oh connected. Stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, at one with the universe and, and how we're, um, really, yeah, just or all energy and how I think like our, our bodies and our souls are different. You know, like there's, mm. we all have like a soul that will, just this yeah, kind of, yeah, yeah, yeah. Going to now mad stuff. If you keep going on this line of, you know, like <laughs> uh, Russell Brand has talked about it as well. So 
that's where where I think true happiness comes from. You know, like doing like simple things with people, having the people around you that you love, I suppose. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Um, because it's all about people and connections and we need people. And by nature, we're, we're animals at the end of the day. Like we're animals and it's our simple. Obviously, it's like Maslow's the hierarchy of needs. We need, we need our basic needs met, you mm. know, and it's, it's, it's that like, you know, um, that connection with people, I think. And it's, yeah. Cause even, even on the journey of, of whatever you're doing, it's the people you meet along the way. And it's those connections is what brings you, I suppose, real joy and real happiness, you know? Um, and instead of like, always we think the scales or the, what we look like or, or the goal mm. of the goal of reaching this or doing this time or, or benching this weight or whatever it might be um it's it's not it's the little it's the little yeah it's the little simple pleasures you know in life mm. i think and then yeah um yeah the whole nature thing i think being yeah back to nearly all that caveman kind of stuff i think that's yeah, yeah yeah you know um yeah i'm trying to think of exactly I, i'd love to put it into a i definitely think of i'll end up again tonight <laughs> with some quote that is like oh that's what happy happiness yeah, is yeah, yeah. you know um but it's not the external things it's not that we can be we're too kind of like um focused on the materialistic stuff or mm. uh, putting success when we have the not you know when we have this and when we have that and and money and you know people oh my god i i can't understand how people can be so driven by by money and by power and by yeah, yeah. Fame and fortune when it do, and we, we we see that from 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 fame like the amount of you know like look at avici or look at um um Robbie, like Robin, yeah, the Williams, or um, what's the other girl that there's look, there's been loads of like stories, yeah, of, yeah, yeah. You know, um, that it's not, yeah, we look at them and think, oh my wow, they have it all. If we, we had all this money and fame and fortune and we could do what we want, we'd all be happy, but no, it has to, um, and you have to currently kind of really find that you know, some people, I, I'm doing a bit, of, I find yoga good now. Mm. it's like being in tune with your body the happiness of yeah, that yeah, yeah, yeah. of being able to know your body more and um being able to know yeah what's you're not searching for chemicals and fake stuff to make mm. you happy you know and and searching for other things because you have to and and the other things like um you know like mem you know, well me say another thing just simply traveling i love like learning and uh, having an open kind of mindset and and having the mindset where oh the best things are yet to come do you know or, or i get excited by it there's so much i have to learn and that that excites me there's so much that so many amazing people in the world having a view on the world that's a nice view on the world you know because i think we travel places and people would say to me oh you're going over there or you should be careful there what are the people like there and at the end of the day we're all yeah so different where it's like we're all but but really we're humans that really mm. we're actually so similar it's like we all look at our differences and we're all like oh they're so different over there and their culture is different and they think differently and but no we're all humans and everyone wants the yeah. same things really and we can it's funny how we put barriers on people and we think that we're we're all segregated and and even um like and i'd be a real proud irish girl now and very you know uh always proud to put on the irish vest and stuff but uh recently i was even thinking at the end of the day you know like countries are put into countries just yeah. from history do you know what i mean of the way I, people are looking for power the same with religion and stuff i'd say i'm very i'm a spiritual person i wouldn't be religious but uh how but that was just the way society we're all uh, we're all one really like we're all the same really do you know it's yeah. just by what our conditioning is kind of and what we were the way we were brought up and we we're put into this uh, I'm from this country, so I'm different than you. But I'm mm. not really. I was just put into this country because in the past, this is the way. Yeah, this yeah, is the way yeah, history yeah. turned out, you know. And it's kind of nearly learning from history and the things that happened in history, I suppose, as well, you know. Yeah, um, definitely. So I think, yeah, I think all that having a nice outlook in the world. Because I and I would have the outlook of people say, "Oh my God, if you go there, these people are this." Like, but most people, I find people at the end of the day are kind and caring and. You know, I love yeah. people and not having that outlook. Yeah, having the outlook of um, no matter where you go, there's lovely people, you know, mm. and they just aren't understood or they're not maybe allowed, they're suppressed, maybe they're not allowed to, to talk about stuff or they're not, you know, and hopefully slowly we'll, we'll all change that life. But um, yeah, just people are great. So I think, yeah, getting it from that uh, and the simple, you know, like um, 
kind of like hip, hip, it might sound like a hippie kind of stuff but like all them kind of yoga type stuff even like you know uh like dancing and being free you know freeing yourself and not caring what others think and being you and doing it's all them 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 little things that mm. um and i think when you're around people who let you be yourself and let you be free that's so kind of empowering yeah, big one that's massive one you know if you can be yeah because uh, without feeling judged that you can be silly and like you can dance around a fire to the moon or whatever it might be do you know what I mean yeah, 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 <laughs> in your yeah, bare yeah. feet and with it like you know and um and that's yeah where you find I think instead of searching for yeah searching for the happiness in in kind of the I don't know what you call it, the fake happiness or the yeah the pleasure I suppose but not real mm. deep happiness because yeah, it comes yeah, around yeah. the circle and you're back with yourself again and with your thoughts and with your with the demons like with the demons mm. that you all have to fight you know um so yeah i found another gabor mache is another guy i actually would have looked a lot he would have talked a lot about that and he talks about addiction and trauma and um just for pers- yeah like perspective on things and our outlook and how um the way we view the world i suppose you know yeah yeah, yeah. um and just about trying to find that passion and finding kind of happiness. It's like you are all on the journey. It's like the journey of trying to be enlightened, you know, like, mm. um, and we are always kind of always trying to search for, we always, we do go back into old passions, I suppose, and old, because we're kind of like, it's the society we're in, like, you know, and it's like even um, companies we're consumers and yeah, we always, they're playing on our emotions like companies and playing on our our weaknesses and playing on our heads all the time mm. but it's always kind of coming back to reminding ourselves you know what we should be as humans i suppose yeah so yeah, i think yeah, just yeah. Of our basic yeah yeah the basic have it with think, yourself yeah and it comes back yeah and have it yourself and then it comes to the connections you have in your life i suppose and being able mm. to be your true self with people who you care about and 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 having a purpose in the world and knowing that you're important yeah and that you you're like for me you know i'm like with fiona i'm like oh uh she needs me i'm important you know and i kind of uh that you have something to give basically but for you to give give yourself to the world and your best self you have to be in the right frame of right mind you yeah. have to be yourself you have to have clarity you have to be the best version of you so you have to work on you and not feel guilty about that or bad about it or give yourself the space if needs be do you know what i mean it's the most important you have to live with yourself um you know what I mean? at the end of the day you have to live with yourself for, for your your life so yeah. the most important thing is that you take that time whatever it may be or whatever things it is that you need to do um you know and it, it's different for everyone everyone's different like i don't know maybe go on some kind of a retreat somewhere here try this or try that be open minded um and then when you give out them like vibes and and you are that kind of person it's kind of like you will it, it does attract then more positivity into your life you know it's like one action will lead to something else happening and something else and then something else and then the jigsaw starts to be put together you know instead of being thrown all over the place with chaos um little by little um because it, it will attract more it's like and uh, i know another thing it's like uh how we can learn from my love like chemistry and physics and stuff because it's yeah and that universe kind of stuff because we can go back to that nearly and even mm. though we again it can sound complicated but it's like energy they they the quote about energy it's like energy cannot be created or destroyed it can only be converted from one form to another and I love that. It's like, um, we all have so much power within us if we can just channel it in the right ways, you know? Yeah, 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 so yeah. So it was my energy, you know, and, and then that energy will, 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 um, when you channel it in, in a good, in a positive, good way, it heightens you to a new level and then a new level again, and then something else will click and something else. So it's like in your weakest hours or when, when something happens, you don't talk yourself out of greatness or you don't talk, mm. you know, because you've kind of went, you know, been through it and you've, yeah, you've dealt with the, dealt with the stuff so i think yeah from all them kind of stuff we can learn we can learn from from everything and that's the, yeah, that's yeah. the exciting thing yeah well, that was perfect. a very long question that was a very long answer to the question <laughs> i don't even i should have gave it a one-line answer i can't even put it into yeah. <laughs> i'll be glad i'll try and clip it up or something <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um but uh, yeah no okay i really appreciate you coming on the podcast uh this episode two 
um, for everybody watching. So, guys, let us know what you think of it. Um, before we finish up, Kate, um, where, like, what's, well, like, what's currently going on in your life? And, like, where can everybody kind of find you? So for me, uh, currently, it's like, again, a step back from the world and it's lovely. I'm loving it. Not spending as much time on my phone, not no pressure, no kind of, not as much media stuff for feeling I have to live up to the image or um, it's just, you know, what's really important. I, I know of some parents were asking me about like their kids being um, with school work and all that. I'm like, oh, they'll be fine. The kids will yeah, be fine. Yeah, yeah. Like we're all freaking out about, again, you know, putting pressure once again once they're happy, once like they, I think it's nice because kids are out playing again. And it's funny, it's nearly getting us back to what we should be a little bit, back mm. to our roots, instead of this fake world where it's all about consumer, consuming things and being, um, yeah, we have to be here now, we have to be there now, we have to be doing this and da, da, da. And we're just like rushing and racing and it's just keeping up with the Jones again. So it's lovely we're taking a step back and hopefully people will see, oh, we're, we're getting to spend time with our families. We're getting to maybe talk about stuff we wouldn't talk about before, probably argue about it, yeah. you know, because we're stuck in it. But these things need to be talked about maybe, or we're trying to build our relationships or work on ourselves. I think this is a great time that we can take, you know what I mean, uh, what we want mm. in life and what we want, not what other people want us to be doing or what we think we should be doing. Um, so for me, yeah, for me at the moment, it's actually working on all my little weaknesses, all the little things. For me, a lot of rehab at the moment, keeping in contact with my physios. Um, yeah. So I can become as strong as I can to get a good base. Because for me, now I need to get the strongest base and foundation that I can get. So when I do go back training proper, that it's, it's um, I'm ready. My body is ready. But you need the base uh, of work done. So I'm out now doing just miles. And it's lovely just out for a, a race walking or running every day. But mm. not putting pressure on myself for sessions. You know, I'm just out for an hour and a half, just getting the base in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. comfy pace. And it's it's lovely to be, you know what I mean? It kind of brings things back of, oh, wow, this is what it should be. And this is why, yeah, this is why you're, you're doing it, I suppose. And um, yeah, that, I know we're all, um, there's some great, you know, what exercise or what our body, like movement, our body was we're designed to move, you know? And again, we all don't know how our bodies, I think it's important people stay in some kind of routine and, you know, get good quality sleep and, you know, eat well and for themselves out of, um, out of kind of respect for themselves, you know, kind of a thing. Mm, out of, yeah, yeah, we all yeah, deserve, yeah. we deserve that, you know, to be our best possible selves and to keep healthy and to, and once we start putting little things in place. So I think this is why it's good for people that they can go back to. Yeah, definitely. Perspective on things and, and not worrying about, and yeah, because as I said, I was meant to this weekend, the World Cup was meant to be on and I would have been probably getting ready now to go fly out to do mm. World Cup. And in my head, nothing was going to change that. So back in November, December, when I was training really hard, there was like nothing would come in the way of that. It would never be cancelled, you know? Yeah. And now it's like, wow, everything kind of happened so fast. It's like, we never know what's going to happen in life, you know? Mm. We can make all the plans in the world, but at the end of the day, it's the the day-to-day -day stuff you know so it's kind of yeah it's, it just puts perspective on things and for me it's I would have at the time there was a week when this happened I was like oh my god I can't believe this is happening I've took a year out uh of, of from working from everything to put everything into this you know and it's kind of like you know you could be like the why me and I'm like yeah look what's happening in the world you know it's like mm. you can make it about you, whatever. But for me now, it's like, oh, you know what, Kate, you're lucky now, you've another year to get even stronger, get even better, yeah. sort your head out more, sort your weaknesses out more. And it can only be a benefit to you kind of a thing. So that's just, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yes, that's that's the, for now. And it's, it's kind of nice, even though I know there's uncertainty and that can be cause anxiety. But um, yeah, it's just taking it all as it, as it comes. And it, yeah. you don't know what's gonna gonna happen. Yeah. Oh, perfect. And I'm excited okay. to get back again, you know, excited to get back into, into races. Yeah. I do love being competitive in racing, but yeah. So that's... Happy days. No, good stuff. Kate, I appreciate you coming on the podcast. Thank you so much. Thanks a bit. It was great. Pleasure. Yeah, was absolute great. pleasure. So it was. Perfect. Just hit pause.